जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन बल गिरिधारी गोपी चन बल गिरिधारी यशोधनंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुन तेरा वन चारी यामुन थेरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरी हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गौर प्रेम नंदे हरि बो नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पुस्ताय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पश्चाच देश तारिणे ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवा ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवा नमो भगवते वसुदेवा नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास 
tato jaya mudhirayat nasta praeshu vabhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter Number 10, entitled Deliverance of the Yamala Arjuna Trees. This morning, text number 9. Hanyante Pashavo Yatra Nirdaya Ajitatma Bi Manya Manar Imam Deham Ajaram Ritya Nashvairam Hanyante Pashavo Yatra Nirdayer Ajitatma Bi Manyamanayar Imam Deham Ajaram Ritju Nashvaram Hanyate Pashavo Yatra Nirdayer Ajitatma Bi Manyamanar Imam Deham Ajaram Ritju Nashvaram Hanyate Pashavo Yatra Nirdayer Ajitatma Bi Manyamaneri Mam Deham Ajaram Ritju Nashvaram Hanyante are killed in many ways especially by slaughterhouses. Pashava, four-legged animals, horses, sheep, cows, hogs, etc. Yatra, wherein, nirdayai, by those merciless persons who are conducted by the mode of passion, Ajitatma be rascals who are unable to control the senses. Manyamana are thinking. Imam this dehum body ajara will never become old or diseased. Amritu, death will never, death will never come. Nasvaram, although the body is destined to be annihilated. Translation, unable to control the senses, rascals, who are falsely proud of their riches or their birth in aristocratic families are so cruel that to maintain their perishable bodies, which they think will never grow old or die, they kill poor animals without mercy. Sometimes they kill animals merely to enjoy an excursion purport by 
His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. When the modes of passion and ignorance increase in human society, giving rise to unnecessary economic development, the result is that people become involved with wine, women, and gambling. Then, being mad, they maintain big slaughterhouses or occasionally go on pleasure excursions to kill animals, forgetting that however one may try to maintain the body, the body is subject to birth, death, old age and disease. Such foolish rascals engage in sinful activities one after another. Being duskritis, they completely forget the existence of the Supreme Controller who is sitting within the core of everyone's heart. Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Rideshe Arjuna Tishtati. That Supreme Controller is observing every bit of one's activity and he rewards or punishes everyone by every bit of one's activity. Or, and he rewards and punishes everyone by giving one a suitable body made by material nature. Brahmayam sarva bhutani yantra rudrani mayaya. In this way, sinful persons automatically receive punishment in different types of bodies. The root cause of this punishment is that when one unnecessarily accumulates wealth, one becomes more and more degraded, not knowing that his wealth will be finished with his next birth. Nasadu manye yatanatmano yam asanapi kleshada asadeha. Bhagavatam 554. Animal killing is prohibited. Every living being, of course, has to eat something. Jivo jivasya jivanam. But one should be taught what kind of food one should take. Therefore, the Ishopanishad instructs, Tena chaktena bunjitaha. One should eat whatever is allotted for human beings. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 9.10, Patram puspam palam toyam yome bhaktiya prayachati tadaham bhakti uparatam ashnami prayatatmana. If one offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. A devotee, therefore, does not eat anything that would require slaughterhouses for poor animals. Rather, devotees take prasadam of Krishna, dena chaktena bunjitaha. Krishna recommends that one give him patram pushpam palam toyam, a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, animal food, to take prasad, remnants of food left by Krishna, yagna shishta shana shanto mujyanti sarva kobishai, Bhagavad Gita 3.13. If one practices eating prasad, even if there is some little sinful activity involved, one becomes free from the results of sinful acts. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha 
Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yadapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Stya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare we're hearing Narada Muni describe the situation of these two sons of Kuvera named Manigriva and Nala Kuvera. Narada Muni describes them as rascals. Rascals, right? Prabhupada often used this word rascal. Rascal because they're, for, they're falsely proud of the riches of their family. They're thinking, our family is so wealthy, we're so rich, we have so much power. They think they can do whatever they like. And they're thinking that wealth will be with them forever. They're fully in the bodily consciousness. And because they're so much in bodily consciousness, they're thinking the goal of life is to satisfy the senses. So they cannot control the senses. They have no proper mode of living, no standards of living. Unable to control their senses. Right? Prabhupada quotes that verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? Nasadu manye yata atmanoyam. Right? Uh, that, that begins that... Uh, Nunam pramata kuru tevi karma yadindriya pritaya prinoti nasadu manye yata atmano yam sanapi klesha da asha deha. Nunam pramata kuru tevi karma. Because of their uncontrolled senses, they're performing many sinful activities. Vi karma acts against the scriptures. Right? The uncontrolled senses. Uh, we'll speak more about these senses in a, in a minute, but their uncontrolled senses cause them to do many sinful activities. Nasadu manye, Prabhupada said, that is not good. Why? Because nasadu manye yata atmano asanapi klesha da asadeha. You will have to take birth again and again in some terrible lower species of life. So one should never be an illusion about his material situation. Unfortunately, these two sons of Kuvera were very much an illusion. But they had some good fortune because they were able to meet Narada Muni and they were able to get special mercy from him. Narada Muni is describing the position of these people who are 
unable to control their senses. They're thinking the goal of life is economic development. And they go on ex increasing their material situation, expanding their material resources for more and more sense gratification. And we can see this phenomena taking place in the world. People have so much wealth, too much wealth. And because they have too much wealth, they engage in unnecessary sinful activities. Uncontrolled senses. Just like while we take prasadam, before taking prasadam, we always honor prasadam by reciting that prayer given to us by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, where he says, Sharira avijajau, jitendriya teka, jive phale vishaya shogare. Right? Of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. So, we find these people who have a lot of wealth, they have no hope of controlling their senses. And they eat all kinds of disgusting things. They eat all kinds of animal flesh. Going to come from it. So, killing of animals is very prominent in the Kali Yuga. People have no proper respect for other forms of life. They think this planet belongs to the humans. They think it's meant for, their, for them to do whatever they like. And they think animals are only there for them to eat. They say, oh, if we did not eat them, there would be so many animals, it would become a problem. They often give foolish excuse is uh, foolish arguments like this to support their sinful activities. So, when Lord Chaitanya met with the Chankazi, he discussed with the Chankazi about how they were also killing the cow, which is the most sacred of all animals. Lord Chaitanya explained to the Chankazi that the cow gives milk, so she's like a mother. The Vedas describe seven mothers, and the cow is one of them. And he said, you also kill the bull. The bull is like the father, because the bull helps to plow the field, to produce grains, to maintain herself. So you kill your mother and you kill your father. What kind of behavior is this? Of course, the Chankazi, he, at first he tried to argue and he was explaining, well, there are two paths in the scriptures. One is the path of renunciation and one of the, is the path of sense gratification. So on the path of sense gratification, we're allowed to eat things like animals. And the Chankasi even said, you Hindus also do this. You also eat animals. You sacrifice animals and you eat them. But Lord Chaitanya pointed out to the Chankasi, there's never any allowance for killing cows. In the Vedic literature, there may be some sacrifice of goats mentioned. But there's never any provision for the killing of the cow or the bull. They're meant to always be protected. And of course, we know Lord Buddha, he also appeared. Nindasi yagna vider ahaha shruti jatam sadaya ridaya darshita pashu gatam keshavadrita buddha sharera Jai Jagadish Hare. Like this, Lord Buddha's appearance is described in the Gita Govinda by Jayadeva Goswami, that Lord Buddha appeared to lead the people away from the Vedic literature because the people were distorting the actual purpose of Vedic sacrifice. 
Vedic uh, killing of an killing of animals, according to Vedas, is it, it's there in the Vedas, but it it's meant to be done by qualified brahmanas. But in the Kali Yuga, nobody is a brahman. Nobody is able to recite the mantras correctly. Therefore, Lord Buddha came and led the people away from the Vedas in order to protect the animals. So, Jayadeva Goswami used the word uh, Pashukna. That word also comes in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. There's a nice verse in the beginning of the 10th canto uh, Sukadeva Goswami describes Nivrita Tarsher Upagiyamanach Bhavo Chotra Mano Biradmat Pumam Virajeta Oh, oh no uh, Nivrita Tarsher Upagiyamanach Bhavo Chotra Mano Biradmat Jiva Pashukna huh? Anyway, the verse ends I've forgotten the verse just now but the, the verse ends with Bina Pashukna Pumam Virajeta Vina Pashukna Sukadeva Goswami is describing that who would not be attracted to hear the glories of the Supreme Lord? There are two people particularly who are not attracted to hear the glories of the Lord. The glories of the Lord are Bhava Oshadi. They're the medicine to cure people from the disease of materialistic life, to cure people from birth and death in the material world. But two classes of people will never be attracted to hear the glories of the Lord. These two people, one is those who are intent in committing suicide, killing their own body, and the other is those who are the killers of innocent creatures, animals. They will never be interested. They are described as butchers, killing the soul. Pushuk, pashuk na. Pashu is the animal, na. Those who kill the animals, butchers. So these butchers, they, can't, they have no taste for hearing Krishna kata. To hear Krishna Kata, we should be Nevrita Tarsher. We should have given up the desire to enjoy the material world. When we have no longer any taste for enjoying materialistic life, then we are actually able to hear the glories of the Lord. Hmm? Hearing the glories of the Lord, very important purifying us. So this, this, of course, this is a yagya. Prabhupada quotes also about sacrifice, yagna. Yagna shistashana shanto. The yagna is performed by santas. The devotees are santas. Devotees perform yagya. They offer their food in sacrifice. They not only offer their food, they offer the hearing in sacrifice. Their chanting is also sacrifice. The yag, Sankirtan Yagya, that is the sacrifice for the Kali Yuga. So devotees of the Lord, they're relieved from sin because they take food, which is first of all offered in sacrifice. People say, oh, food offered in Krishna said, leaf, flower, fruit, water. So I just have to eat leaves and flowers and fruit and water. That will not be healthy. No, there are many other things to eat. There's also beans and grains. These things, full. you can get protein very adequately without eating animal flesh. Srila Prabhupada explains that kill, the eaters of animal flesh are thieves and they're rascals. They cannot be happy. If one is a thief and a rascal, how he can be happy? 
So they're taking what is not actually meant for them. Everything belongs to the Lord. And the animals also belong to the Lord. Of course, Prabhupada also quotes, Jivo Jivasha Jivanam. One living entity is food for another. But there is a proper food for human beings. People in the mode of passion, they're controlled by the tongue. They cannot control their senses. Therefore, they engage in these kind of sinful activities. They eat all kinds of forbidden food. And the result is they simply go to hell. Jiva Goswami, in one of his purports in Srimad Bhagavatam, he gives a story about the four sons who all came to the astrologer. There was the king's son, there was the rishi's son, the devotee's son, and the butcher's son. And the astrologer was asked to give them blessings. So he blessed the king's son, Raja Putra Charanjiva, don't die. Because he's the king's son. He's doing all nonsense. He's doing so many silly things. He's going to be in big trouble when he dies. So long as he's king, so long as he is the king's son, he has no problem. But once the father dies, he's going to be in difficulty. Once he dies, he'll really be in trouble. So the astrologer blessed him, Charanjiva, don't die. Majiva Rishi Putraka, the Rishi's son, is living in the forest. And he, in the forest, they, they don't have any big feast. They simply eat the wild leaves and the wild fruits. Whatever grows, some roots are found. They will eat like that. Just as when Lord Ramachandra was in exile with Sita and Lakshman, they were eating just leaves and roots and flowers. So the Rishi is living like that. So the astrologer blessed him. May your death come soon because you're doing such nice, pious activities that when you give up your body in the future, you will get a very good birth. And then for the devotee, he said, Jivava Marava Sadhu. You, the son of the sadhu, son of a devotee, doesn't matter if you live or if you die. Every day you're having prasadam, every day you're hearing the glories of the Lord. And when you die, you'll continue. Either you'll go back to Godhead or you'll take birth in a similar situation with devotees. But the butcher's son, Vyadi Majiva Mamara, for the butcher's son, don't live and don't die because you're living in hell and when you die, you will go to hell. So this is the situation for these animal killers. Prabhupada talks here, sometimes these rich men they go on excursions, they go out hunting. Sometimes you'll see pictures of these big uh, politicians and powerful statesmen that they like to go out there with their guns, hunting and shooting innocent animals. In England, we remember, they have things called a fox hunt. And the people will come on their horses with dogs, pack of dogs, and they go and hunt creatures like wild boars and foxes. This is their recreation, hunting innocent animals and shooting and killing different birds and game. Very sinful activity. When we kill, then the, re the reaction is, we have to be killed. Just like Lord Chaitanya told the Chankazi that you are killing the cow 
when you kill the cow, you will have to suffer a birth for, in hell for every hair on the body of the cow. You will have to take birth and suffer. Similarly, Narada Muni and Srimad Bhagavatam, he was telling Prachini Bharashat, because Prachini Bharashat was fond of doing Vedic sacrifices. He thought he was doing some pious activity by killing animals in the name of the Vedas. But Narada Muni told him, these animals are waiting for you and in the future they're going to kill you. They're going to come and do to you just as you did to them. Right? What we do to others will come back to us. We bring harm, pain, we kill, the reaction comes. We have to be killed. So people in the mode of passion, they, they cannot understand this because they're so blinded by their wealth. They have not understood the temporary nature of the material body. So how important it is to educate people in Krishna consciousness, to give them the message of Lord Chaitanya, beginning with the chanting of the holy name. Of course, people are in the mode of passion. They're often very sinful. They're very attached to their sense gratification. They don't like to hear. They don't like to hear these kind of things. But Lord Chaitanya has this Sankirtan movement. Let them hear the holy name. Let them just simply hear the holy name. And by hearing the holy name, they can be purified. Devotees in a USA one time, in Dallas, the devotees were on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada. And they were walking in a big park and they could see at the side of the park, there was a very big mansion. So the devotees explained to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, in that mansion lives one of the richest men in America. He has oil mines, Prabhupada. He's drilling oil. He's got millions of dollars. So the devotees went on to tell Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, we want to preach to this man. So Prabhupada's eyes opened. Oh, you want to preach to him. What are you going to preach to him? What are you going to say to him? So the devotees were a little surprised. They didn't expect this from Prabhupada. But Prabhupada was curious to know. How are you going to preach to him? What are you going to say? So one devotee said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, we'll tell him to surrender to Krishna. And Prabhupada laughed. He said, do you think he'll be interested? Do you think he will be willing to surrender to Krishna? Another devotee said, Prabhupada, we'll tell him he's not the body. And Prabhupada said, do you think he'll believe you? How are you going to preach to him? Prabhupada said, you should tell him he is a thief and when he dies, he will suffer for all the, oil, all the oil that he has taken from the ground. He will have to suffer for that because he has taken what is not his property. Tena chaktena bunjataha magridaha kasatitanam. Right? Ishopanishad, the very first mantra of Ishopanishad. We should take only what is our quota and we should not take more knowing well to whom it belongs. So Prabhupada said, you tell the man like this. You tell him he is a thief and when he dies he will have to suffer for all everything that he has taken. So this is the situation people in the material world in the mode of passion, enjoying their wealth. They're very intoxicated. They're very proud. 
and because of their false pride, they think they can do anything and nobody can stop them. And they do all kinds of sinful activities, not only wine, women, and gambling, but also this animal killing, eating all kinds of different creatures. Sometimes you get restaurants, they advertise how many different kinds of animals they have available to cook and serve to their customers. And, and somehow or other, people are so attracted by this, they think, oh, this is very nice. We can pick what kind of animal we would like to eat. They do not realize how sinful how serious is this activity and how they will have to be punished for this kind of behavior. So, Lord Krishna is speaking in Bhagavad Gita. He's speaking very simply. Offer him leaf, flower, fruit, water. That's basic. If we don't, these things, of course, they're available everywhere. Anyone can offer these kinds. Everywhere in the world you get leaves and flowers and fruit and water. Well, flowers, some countries, not so easy. But at least leaf, water, may be brought from faraway places. But Lord Krishna is not greedy for these offerings. But what is important, we have to understand the principle of love that we want to offer something with love. It is the love which Lord Krishna wants, not the offerings himself. And the same principle is there that we should want to take food which is prepared with love. But when the animal has to be killed for the satisfaction of our tongue, then it is the most sinful thing. Srila Prabhupada explained why people are so attached to meat eating. He said, they have to eat, they have to taste blood. They like the taste of blood. But if we want to taste blood the natural way, it is available in the form of milk. Milk is a transformation of the blood of the cow. It is the most healthy nutritious food stuff. By drinking milk, we can develop a good brain. And with a good brain, we can understand spiritual knowledge. But when we eat animal flesh, then our whole consciousness becomes polluted. And we can never understand the principles of Krishna consciousness. So, Understanding that we're not the body, that is the beginning of spiritual knowledge. Understanding that we're not the body, we should understand the goal of life is not simply to satisfy the senses, but it is to control the senses. People think, oh, if I have to be a vegetarian, I will starve. But Prabhupada went to America and people were not vegetarian. Prabhupada cooked for them and when they tasted the food, they all agreed they'd never tasted such nice food. They'd never felt so satisfied eating the food prepared by Prabhupada, which was of course prasada. Prasad offered to Krishna. So it's very important, I see in a lot of our preaching, that people don't know how to cook. They don't know how to prepare nutritious meals. One lady complained to me, she said, my son will only eat cow's meat. So I was shocked. Uh, she told me her son was only 16 years of age, but he 
refused to eat all other forms of food. He wanted everything must be beef, the meat of the cow. So I asked her to bring her son, and I talked with her son. Then I found out from him that when he was young, he was sick, and he was in very poor health, and the mother thought that to make her son healthy, she had to give him cow's meat to eat. So ever since that time, the boy became attached to eating cow's meat. But I told her that this was wrong. You made the mistake that you gave your son this cow's meat. You can give him very nutritious, healthy food without taking the flesh of the cow. By giving him the flesh of the cow, you gave him the worst karma. And you also get karma yourself because you're purchasing that meat and you're cooking it and serving it to him. So you're also sharing in the karma. You're also taking heavy karma. You have to suffer a lot for all of this. So how to get free of this? The atonement is simply to take shelter of Krishna, to surrender to Krishna and engage in devotional service. Krishna can free us from unlimited amounts of sinful reactions. But we have to be sincere. We have to sincerely repent for that sinful activity and never again commit that kind of activity. So meat eating, so common, people are not educated. They're not taught how to cook. They're not taught what is the proper food for human beings. They're thinking we'll be healthy. They don't realize the heavy reactions which come. And these reactions come not only on the individual, but they come on the whole planet. Just like just now, the whole planet is suffering because of the sinful activities of the people. Because we do things for our own sense gratification. We are thinking the goal of life is economic development. We have to go on and get more wealth and more money and enjoy our senses more. We do not understand the nature of human life. As Bhagavad Gita says, Jatasya hi dhruvam ritju, dhruvam janmam ritasya cha. For one who has taken birth, death is certain. And after death, we have to take birth again. Therefore, we have to be very conscious, very careful, and prepare ourselves for the next life. Where are we going? Where are you going to take your next birth? It's very important for people to think about this. So now at this time, with so many cities closing down, locked down, shut down, the whole of India shut down, it's an opportunity for people to become more introspective and to stop and to sit down and to think, what is the purpose of this life? Where are we going? What is going to happen after this life? Where am I going to take my next birth? So we hope that people will become more thoughtful and inquired like this. And at that time, the Krishna Consciousness Movement is here. It's here to guide such thoughtful people and to help them to prepare for a better destination in the future. Ultimately, of course, we want that they will all get freed from birth and death. No more birth and death. We have that one book, Coming Back. So the last chapter is very aptly called Don't Come Back. That should be the motto. We don't want to come. If we have to come back again 
into this material world, it means again birth and death, again the miseries of material life. We should be very serious, therefore, to try to perfect this human life, get out from this material existence. Don't come back in any form of life. Don't worry about trying to be rich or trying to be famous. Just simply understand that we're not the body, we're all souls, and our duty is to surrender to the Supreme, to the Supreme Lord and engage in His service. Then we can actually be happy. Our mind can be satisfied. Our mind, if you study the Sankhya philosophy, it's described how the mind comes from false ego in the mode of goodness. So the mind's natural condition is to be in the mode of goodness. Being in the mode of goodness, we have to learn how to control the senses to be peaceful, controlling the tongue, eating food in the mode of goodness. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, we learn there's food in the mode of goodness, in the mode of passion, and in the mode of ignorance. Food in the mode of goodness will increase our duration of life. It will aid our bodily health. It will give us nourishment and satisfaction. Food in the mode of passion simply agitates us, gives us more and more material desires, leads us to perform sinful activities. And food in the mode of ignorance is food that is decayed and putrid, animal flesh, abominable things, which are not meant for human consumption. So. We should eat food which is in the mode of goodness, that it very pleasing to us, pl satisfies the mind. This is our natural condition. So we will stop. We'll ask if there's any question. Yes, Prabhu? Pankajangari Prabhu? Jananiva. Yes, thank you for that question, and it's an important point, that there must be sense gratification, but we have to know what is the proper level of sense gratification for the human being, for the human life in this human body. There's prescribed methods of living and acting and eating. We're not meant to live like the animals. Animals, beasts like the tiger, they will eat all kinds of flesh. They're hungry for flesh, to taste the blood. But the human body is a different nature. When you study the structure, design of the human body, we see it's meant to be vegetarian, herbivorous. The, the, the nature of the teeth, the intestines, acids in the stomach, everything in the design of the human body indicate that the vegetarian diet is proper for the human body. But the society has become so corrupt that people think you have to eat meat to be healthy. So sense gratification has to be there. Not too much, not too little. It has to be the prescribed amount. Too much sense gratification, not good. No sense gratification is another problem. So the proper level of sense gratification, not sense gratification like the dogs and the hogs, but 
regulated by Scripture. So the Vedic Scriptures, the, 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 the Shastra, they prescribe a proper level of living and acting. They teach us how to actually enjoy happiness in this world. And we see the devotees are actually happy, they're joyful, even though this uh, lockup may be there and we're confined to a room. But for a devotee, it's not a problem. A devotee can be anywhere and he can sit and chant and be happy. A devotee doesn't see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation. He sees everywhere the same. But for people in bodily consciousness, it's not like that. They think, enjoy the senses, and they want to try to enjoy the senses unlimitedly. But they're always disappointed. They never can, they're never satisfied with their sense gratification. They're always looking for some new form of sense gratification, some new drug, some new food, some new alcohol. They're trying to, because they're never satisfied. But the nature of the mode of goodness, the Brahminical nature, is that we should be satisfied living in the mode of goodness. The mind is satisfied. We don't mind. Do the same activities every day, just like in their temple, every day, morning program. Sing the same songs every day. Materialistic people say, oh, the same song every day, no new song. We're very happy. We get great pleasure, satisfaction in singing these songs, in doing these activities, offering arti every day, the same thing. No, it's pleasure in Krishna consciousness. But materialistic people know they want some new sense gratification. They want more because their sense gratification never satisfies them. So that's the difference. Thank you for that question. Any other question? Well, we have to understand that wealth belongs to Krishna. We have to use that wealth in the service of Krishna. We sh if we are thinking this wealth is mine and I have acquired it by my hard work, by my intelligence, then naturally we will become proud. Rather, we should understand that this wealth has been given to me by the grace of Krishna and I'm meant to use it in his service. If we don't use it in Krishna's service, then the wealth will be taken from us in different ways. Different ways like doctors, you'll become ill and you have to spend your money to giving to doctors. Or you may be involved in legal cases and you have to spend so much money on lawyers. These different ways. Maya will find some way to take that wealth from us. But if while we have it, we should use it for the service of Krishna. If we don't use it in the service of Krishna, we'll use it in Maya, in the service of Maya. And this is the this, this is this uh, using everything in the service of Maya. We do this because we're thinking it's mine. We're thinking it belongs to me. 
So we have to remember, nothing is actually mine. Everything belongs to Krishna. It's given to us by the grace of Krishna. And it can be taken from us by the grace of Krishna. Yes, in your family somebody is eating meat and drinking wine. You have to think that you're unfortunate. You have an unfortunate, inauspicious situation. Somehow, as a result of your karma, you're put in, you've been put into this condition, inauspicious situation. You, but you can protect, you can help yourself in that situation by chanting the holy name of Krishna, by worshipping the Lord, by not having anything to do with the other people's meat and wine. They want to have these things, you should keep far away from it. You should have your own little temple room in your home, make a little altar, and have a temple room and you can be there and you can chant and you can read the scriptures there. And in this way you can develop some Krishna consciousness. You have to understand this family situation is not eternal. We all have a material body. We are living there for some time. So, you've been put into this condition, you have to accept it, but at the same time, you have to try, to try your best to cultivate Krishna consciousness. As Prabhupada would say, make the best of a bad bargain. A bad bargain, yeah, you're in that home where people are drinking wine and eating meat. Make the best of it yourself. You, you chant Hare Krishna and read the scriptures and prepare food yourself. Prepare uh, pure food, vegetarian foodstuffs offered to Krishna. Keep far away from the meat and the alcohol. Yes, just like when a, a woman gives birth to a child, she will feed her breast milk to her child. Her breast milk is also transformation of blood. So similarly, when the cow has a calf, in the beginning the cow will provide milk for the calf. After some time the calf grows and no longer requires the milk of the mother. In fact, after some time, it's not good for the calf to go on drinking the milk of the mother. But the, the cow still has a lot of milk and is still providing milk. And that milk is the natural food for human beings. It is the cow's gift to human society. The cow needs humans to take care of her and we need the cow to provide milk because from milk we are able to produce ghee which is so important for sacrifice. So since time immemorial with cows, this planet actually belongs to the cow. The deity of the earth planet is Mother Bhumi. She has the form of a cow. So cows are part of this planet. And, but they need, they're domestic creatures. They need to be taken care of. We're meant to take care of them. And at the same time, we need the cow 
because she gives it very valuable thing, very valuable foodstuff called milk. Milk is very important for the health of young children. Mothers feed their breast milk to children, and as the child grows up, the child can drink the milk of the cow. The milk gives strength and brings health to the body and helps us to develop a good brain to understand Krishna consciousness. There's no sin involved in drinking the milk of the cow when it is offered to Krishna. We take the milk from the cow. The cow eats grass and she provides milk. We offer the milk to Krishna and we accept the prasada. It is not sinful. Your family members are killing animals. You can talk to them. You could try, first of all, if, you, if you're a good cook, then you prepare nice foodstuffs and you can attract people to eat nice vegetarian foodstuffs without killing the animals. That is the best thing. If you, have, if you are able to attract people to appreciate how vegetarian diet is so nice, it's so nourishing, it's so tasty, it's so healthy. If you, then you can convince people they don't need to eat meat, they can just forget about it. If they have something better in the form of prasadam, then why will they want to eat these horrible things? Why will they want to go through the business of killing animals? It is not pleasant. You have to watch animals being killed. It's very pathetic. It's very uh, terrifying scene. Young children will cry if they see animals being killed. Humans are so cold-hearted. They kill the animals. And of course, so much blood. It's such a nasty scene. But taking vegetables and grains Everything is provided without killing the animals. We can live very comfortably. So, there will always be a class of people who are animal eaters, but at least they should learn not to eat the cow, because the cow is a special animal which has to be protected. Right? That's the job of the Vaishya. Krishi go raksha vaninam Vaishya karma svabhavajam. Go raksha, protecting the cows, is one of the duties of the Vaishya. So we don't want people to eat cow meat. If they have to eat meat, then there's provision. You eat animals like a goat. Goats can be sacrificed in the Vedic literature is mentioned. You want to eat meat, you take a goat, but only w one night in the month. It says on the dark moon night. Dark moon night means once in a month. You take a goat and you have to go before Goddess Kali, and at that time, when you're killing the goat, you say, I am killing you. In the future, you can kill me. You can eat me. So that's it. The, the law. You want to eat meat, you want to kill the animal, you have to be killed in the future. So you can explain these things to people, but of course, for most people, ordinary people, they don't like to hear these kind of things, difficult. Better way is to attract them by giving them nice, tasty, nutritious, Prasadam. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Srimad Bhagavatam ki.
और प्रेमानंदे